Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. When we send SMS, what factors or parameters do we need to consider? Obviously, message content and recipient's number, right? What else? Sender number? We've learned that. We also learned in the previous lesson that SMS sending programs bind to SMS center. Then you need to tell your program the IP address, port, system ID, and the password of the SMSC. In the seventh lesson, we also learned that when we send non-English SMS, we need to tell SMSC the encoding scheme of the SMS data through data coding parameter. To some extent, you can understand data coding as an indicator telling SMSC what type of language the SMS is written. What else? Is there any other parameter that we need to specify? After seeing the title of the lesson, I guess you will have some ideas about what we are going to learn in this lesson. Just as we tell SMSC the encoding scheme of the SMS data, so also we tell SMSC the type of sender number and the type of recipient's number. TON, T-O-N, is referring to the type of number. Source address TON is an SMPP parameter referring to the type of source address. Destination address TON is also an SMPP parameter, which refers to the type of destination address. But what is type? Let's find out in the technical documentation. Alright, I've got this SMPP protocol spec, which I've introduced to you guys in the previous tutorials. Let's go to the table of contents and find TON, T-O-N. Here is it. This section, from here to here, tells us the concept of TON in great detail with a couple of examples. Each example explains a certain type of number. The first example is international number. The second one is alphanumeric. Let's take this number as an example. In this number, the plus sign is an international trunk prefix. The 44 is country code that belongs to the United Kingdom. The rest is 6781122334444, which pretty much looks like random stuff. This lesson is not going to discuss too much about telephone number formats. It is different in different countries. If you want to learn about American telephone numbers, do a search telephone numbers in Americas. If you want to learn about that in other countries, do the related search. Let's see this plus sign. It indicates the fact that the destination address is an international number. When you send an SMS from your mobile device, the plus sign will probably help you set the destination address time to 1. When ESME, your application, system, or program, send an SMS to plus 4467811223344, you need to set the time to 1, address to 4467811223344. Also, you need to set the NPI. So, what is NPI? NPI is Numeric Plan Indicator. When your destination or recipient is a mobile phone, you can simply set the destination address NPI to 1. Later in this tutorial, I'll tell you guys the implementation and how to write the code in Java. This international number, in this case, the ton type of number is 1. Now let's see another type of number, Alpha Numeric. Alpha numeric address and gives human readable names for our addresses. Let me give you an example. When you create a Google account or log in with a new device, you might receive a verification code through SMS. Let's ignore the message content and look at the sender address. It is Google. Normally you see a sender address to be a series of numbers unless it's already stored in your contact list. But I never stored Google in my contact list. Google, this sender number is an alphanumeric sender address, which consists of English letters. Another example is that every month I receive my phone bill through SMS. Again, ignore the content and look at the sender address, which is also an alphanumeric address that consists of English letters. 
Similarly, if you are running a company and need to send SMS to your customers, you can use the alphanumeric as the source address. You can also ask a telecom company to send SMS for you using the alphanumeric sender address. Alphanumeric sender address may contain English letters, numbers, maybe underscores, maybe space. Maximum length is 11 typically. However, before using a certain alphanumeric sender ID, you'd better communicate with your provider and make sure whether someone else is using the same sender address or not. And make sure whether the SMS center accepts the sender address you proposed and see if your provider can generate correct bill or not, and etc. Alphanumeric is usually used as source address or sender address or sender ID. In other words, you cannot send a message or reply to an alphanumeric address. Let's see this mobile phone as an example. You will notice that I can input some text and reply to this number because this is just a typical local number. In contrast, to this sender, I'm not allowed to reply. I can't even find the text box where I'm thinking about inputting my reply. In other phones, I can see a text box and it seems I can send to this number. When I click on the text box, the keyboard shows up. I input some text and trigger the send button. Then I'll receive a prompt that says, invalid recipient entered. In summary, alphanumeric is used as sender address rather than recipient's address. But some of you guys might find some exceptions. For example, when I buy a flight ticket, I receive such a reminder via SMS that tells me to pay as soon as possible in order not to get your order cancelled. Ignore the message content and look at the sender ID. It's also an alphanumeric sender ID, which consists of English letters and numbers. But it seems like I can reply to this message because I see a text box below. Then I input some text and click on send button. Then I got a pop-up that says it's gonna send to the number 5013. I press send button. Then the message is sent. This alphanumeric sender address consists of English letters and numbers. But attention please. This message is sent to the number 5013 instead of the entire alphanumeric sender ID. So the exception is not really an exception. My conclusion still doesn't change. Alphanumeric address can only be a source address, at least in the present time. Maybe in the future things might change if there is need for it. Question. How to set the addressing parameters if you want to send an SMS using alphanumeric sender ID? Still remember that when you send an SMS to your international mobile number, you set the destination address to 1 and destination address NPI to 1 and the destination address to number without a plus sign? What if you send from an alphanumeric sender ID? The answer is source address time equal to 5, source address NPI equal to 0. The address is ABCDFG in this example. Now let's see some other possible values that TON and NPI can take. Again, let's stick to the spec. Go to the table of contents. Go to PDU definitions. Here is it. Click it. You can see a couple of tables regarding TON and NPI. Let's see the ton. It can take values ranging from 0 to 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In the previous example, we learned ton equal to 1 indicates international number, ton equal to 5 indicates alphanumeric address. Ton equal to zero is used pretty a lot, especially in the case where an ESME sends SMS from a service shortcode. You can find more information regarding service shortcode in this document. 
Let's see the NPI, numeric plan indicator. The values can be 0, 1, 3, 4, 6, 8, and etc. When you send from alphanumeric sender address, the source address NPI is 0. When you send to an international mobile number, the destination address NPI is 1. In case you don't know, these numbers are binary numbers and you can convert them into decimal numbers or hexadecimal numbers with scientific calculators or programmer's calculator. No matter what ton or what NPI or what combination of ton and NPI you use, make sure your SMS center accepts that combination. Make sure the message is sent properly and the billing is done correctly. Then how to write code to specify ton and NPI? All right, let's take this demo code as an example. This is the source code. It's rather simple, and I've introduced it in the previous tutorials more than once. Let's find out this method, set source address. This is an overloaded method. Apart from taking a string type argument, it also takes an address type argument. So, Let's define a couple of new address type variables. Source address and destination address. Then you can set ton. Let's say one set NPI one set address set on set NPI. Set address then here instead of using string type source address let's use the newly defined source address do the same thing to the destination address Save the file. That's pretty much it. We've learned the concept of ton and NPI with some real-world examples. If you want to learn more about this subject, I think the technical spec gives pretty a lot of knowledge on it. We also learned the implementation. So, that's it. Hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching. Peace.